You know, it's a funny thing about relationships. So uh, it's amazing how I got some things wrong early on in my relationship with Andrea, and she still went out with me anyway. <laughs> like, I got her name wrong. True story. When I first met Andrea, I got her name wrong. That's not a good way to start. <laughs> so we were in a class together, and she sat next to me, and she had gotten up and was, and I could tell that the guy who sat next to her on the other side knew her, from somewhere, and so I said, hey, what's that girl's name again? Is it, uh, is it Andrea, is it Andrea? And he goes, it's Andrea. I was like, okay. So when I saw her the next time, I was like, hey, Andrea. <laughs> I totally got it wrong. And then she still said yes when I asked her on our first date, which is amazing. She showed me some grace. So we go on our first date, and we went to one of these putt-putt golf places, and we had already played putt-putt golf, and then we had uh, gone on the go-karts, and we were going to go on the bumper cars, uh, the, the bumper boats. You know what I'm talking about? Those bumper boats where you can spray each other. And she was stepping out to get into one of the bumper boats, and she missed the boat and stepped into the water. It wasn't tethered to the dock. It wasn't tethered to the dock, true, in all fairness. But she stepped, I'm gonna brag, I'm gonna brag on you. I'm trying to brag on you in a second. So she steps off into the water and she's up up to her waist in this water. And so I help her up out of the water. She gets up and she's like, well, that stinks. And then she goes on with her night as if nothing had happened. And she just had a good old time, you know, takes a licking and keeps on ticking kind of thing. She just went on with her night and I was so impressed. I was like, wow, like she didn't even let that bother her. That's amazing. That actually made a good impression on me. I was like, I like this girl. You know, she just acted like she wasn't walking around in soaking wet jeans the rest of the night. I said, this is my kind of girl, you know? And so uh, that was a good sign and we hit it off. Ah, relationships. Relationships are always fun and exciting and adventurous. They're definitely always interesting, right? Whether you're in a dating relationship, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse, it's always interesting. You never know what's going to happen, do you? You never know. When you think of Christianity, what it means to be a Christian, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? You know, maybe if you haven't, if you didn't grow up in church and, and you don't know much about Christianity, to you, being a Christian means you go to church. I don't know much about it, but I see these people going to church, right? And that's your only concept. Or maybe you, you were raised in a Christian home, and to you, because of your upbringing or your church experience, to you, Christianity was all about following a bunch of rules that God had. Did anybody grow up that way? It was all about keeping these rules that God had made. Well, this morning I want to tell you that Christianity, while it may be many things, is mainly one thing. It's a relationship with God. It's all about a relationship with Jesus. And when you realize this one truth, it will change everything for you. It will change everything. It will change your view of God from this strict mean, punishing God to a loving, heavenly father kind of God. It'll change your view from, you know, keeping a bunch of rules to enjoying this relationship we have. And it'll change your motivation for why you do so certain things from a have to mentality out of duty and obligation. God expects this, so I have to do it to I want to do it. I want to do it for my God because I love him so much. It truly changes everything when you make this change from religion to relationship. So if we look in the Bible, what clues do we have that God desires a relationship with us? Well, there's lots of clues, starting from the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, that walked the earth. And it says that God walked with them and talked with them. They, they could hear him and, and speak back and forth with him. Uh, we know Abraham had a special relationship with God where he heard from God and he was even called a friend of God. He was called God's friend. That's a cool thing to be known as, isn't it? I'm a friend of God. Moses, he spoke to Moses out of a burning bush and then later he went up on a mountain and, and received and heard the Ten Commandments and got those from God. Many relationships throughout the Bible where God spoke to people and he would walk among them and, and their, his presence was very much known to them. He could, they could tell 
uh, that his presence was with them. In the Old Testament, it says that the Lord was a husband to Israel. And we're going to be in Mark 12, but I'm going to read Isaiah 54 right now for you. In Isaiah 54, verse 4, it says, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. And so it calls him, it says, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. That's pretty cool. You know, you think about the creator of the earth and what is his relationship to Israel? He's like a husband to them. He cares for them as a husband cares for his bride. In the New Testament, the church is called the bride of Christ. We are called the bride of Christ. Jesus comes along and calls himself the bridegroom. And then in 2 Corinthians eleven two, 2, Paul wrote, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ. And so there's these many descriptions of talking about how we are in this relationship with God. And one of them, one of those types of analogies it gives is a husband and wife um, relationship. So now we're going to go to Mark chapter 12, go into the New Testament. Mark chapter 12, and we're going to be in verse 28. And before we get there, I just wanted you to keep in mind that we're talking about the creator of the universe, right? The person who created everything, the God above all other gods. Of course, we know all other gods are false gods, but he's the God above all other gods. He's the creator of the universe. And if we were to ask the creator of the universe, what do you want from me? What do you desire of me, O creator of the universe? We might expect something like, well, I want you to find a thousand goats and sacrifice them to me. Or I want you to go climb the highest mountain and bring back this special flower that you only find at the top of this mountain. You know, or um, I want you to go hang upside down from a tree and sing row, row, row your boat backwards a hundred times. Which, by the way, have you ever tried that? It's not as easy as you think. Boat, 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 your row streamly down the gin. It's, it's kind of crazy. You know, or, or, you know, go kill the wicked witch of the West and bring me back her broomstick. You know, something like that. You know, and then we would go and we would do that thing and be like, okay, God, I did it. Here's her broomstick and my duty to you is over. Right? I did this huge task that you asked of me and now my duty is done. You know, project finished. But God doesn't answer that way. Look at how Jesus answers the question when someone asks him, what is the greatest commandment? Mark 12, verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus answered, the most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. So Jesus answers this teacher by saying, here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to love him. And he wants you to love him with everything you have, with everything you are, body, soul, mind, spirit. Love him with every part of you, right? Love him with every part of you. Jesus says that the thing God wants the most from you is a relationship with him, to love him. He already loves you. Will you choose to love him back, right? And this teacher of the law who asks the question recognizes Jesus as being Correct. Well said, teacher, the man replied. 
you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. See, this teacher of the law got it. He got what following God is all about. It's all about a relationship. He knew that loving God is more important than any of the other things you could do for God, any more than any of the tasks you could do. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that this teacher of the law even had some Old Testament passages in mind as he was saying these things. Like the time in the Old Testament where Jesus, where God said <clears throat> to his people, he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You know, these, these people that just go through the motions and they do all these tasks for God, you know, but, the, but their hearts aren't really in it. You know, they, they sing all the songs, they do all the duties, all the religious duties, but their hearts aren't in it. They're trying to impress me by doing all these things, but they don't truly desire a relationship with me. That'd be like us saying to our spouse or our boyfriend or our girlfriend, I remember it, our anniversary. I gave you flowers. I opened the car door for you. You know, I, I said I love you three times this week. There, you should be happy. Like I did all my duties. You should be happy. Are they going to be impressed? No, because they can tell your heart really isn't in the relationship. If you're opening car doors and you're sending flowers, but you're doing all this just to get a checklist off and done and get them off your back, then your heart isn't in it and they're not going to be pleased. If you're opening doors and saying, I love you, you know, occasionally, but during the week, you're not hardly talking to them at all, then that I love you doesn't mean much, does it? It's like, where's the rest of the week? They want a real relationship. And in relationships, there's time together. There's communication together. <clears throat> I bet you don't know what day this is, said the wife to her husband as he was leaving for work. He, of course, not wanting to uh, lose face, says, well, of course I know what today is. Well, got to go to work. See you later, honey. And so at 10 in the morning, the doorbell rang, and she had delivered to her 12 red roses. At one o'clock, the doorbell rings again, and it's this big box of her favorite chocolates. Later on, a, a boutique delivers a designer dress, and now he knows. He's like, all right, I'm good. I, I, I saved myself, and I'm not going to be in trouble when I get home, right? So he gets home, and, and, and sure enough, his wife was, in fact, surprised. Wow, first the flowers, then the chocolates, and then the dress. I've never had a more wonderful Groundhog Day in all my life. This is about you and Andrea, isn't it? Shh, don't tell. <laughs> don't tell. You spilled the beans. <laughs> you know, we can do all these things to try to impress people, and we can completely miss the point sometimes. How many of you know that's true? We can do all the, the right things, but still miss the point. What impresses people is when they see that you truly desire a relationship with them, that you want time with them. What impresses God? Sometimes we think the things we do impress God, but if we do all these religious things and our heart's not really in it, it doesn't really impress them that much. We're just going through the motions. God is impressed when we seek out a real relationship with him, an everyday relationship. That's what he desires, to walk and talk with us every day. It's all about the relationship. When I was in fourth grade, I didn't know much about relationships. Fourth grade was when I got my first girlfriend, if you can really call it that. <laughs> so I remember we were at this church lock-in. And I don't know what youth pastor came up with this crazy idea. Hey, you know what a good idea would be? If we lock children inside of a church building and don't let them out, and we stay up all night and give them a bunch of sugar and caffeine and, and, and then send them home to their parents the next day after they stayed up all night, right? So anyway, we're at this lock-in, and I'm not sure why I was at a lock-in in fourth grade. My guess is my parents were in charge of it, and they pulled us kids along, you know, as the ones in charge of it. But anyway... 
we're in this classroom. I'm in this classroom with these two girls who were in my, my class, my age, Becky and Elizabeth. And uh, Becky is dropping these hints over and over again that Elizabeth might like me, right? And finally, she just asks me straight up. She says, Jeremy, if you knew Elizabeth was going to say yes to asking her to go out with you, would you ask her? That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, now I liked Elizabeth for a while. And so I was like, yeah, <laughs> yes, I would say, yes, I would ask her out. And she was like, okay, ask her then. <laughs> I was like, okay, Elizabeth, will you go out with me? Yes. And so we started dating. Yay, right? Fourth grade dating relationship. So Sunday, you know, that was uh, Saturday. Sunday, go to church. I see Elizabeth again, and I'm happy I got this girlfriend. Monday, I'm on cloud nine. I'm at home playing music in my room, and I'm just singing along, and I'm just happy as can be. I got a girlfriend. Right? Tuesday, I'm on cloud nine. I'm still happy, still singing the music. Wednesday, I was really excited because Wednesday was youth group night, which meant I got to see Elizabeth again. Right? I get to see my girlfriend again. I get there on Wednesday night, and this guy in the youth group comes up to me, and he goes, Jeremy, I got some bad news for you. I was like, what? He said, Elizabeth is breaking up with you. I was like, what? Are you serious? Like, it's only been four days. Why? Why is she breaking up with me? And he said, well, apparently she said, you've been going out with her for four days and you haven't called her even once. And I was like, oh, man. I didn't know anything about relationships in fourth grade. I didn't know you're supposed to call the girl. I, I wasn't ready for all that. <clears throat> so I learned something about relationships that day. I learned that in relationships, it means you communicate with each other. She was wanting some communication. And, and our relationship with God is no different. There's got to be communication there. So what are some different ways that we communicate with God or God communicates with us? This is audience participation time. What are some ways we communicate with God, God communicates with us? Prayer. Okay, good. You got the big one, prayer. What else? Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. So is that our communication to God or God's communication to us? Both. Nope. God, God communicated to us, right? Telling us about himself. Yeah. So you got it. You got him. Prayer is the way we talk to God. And by the way, if you learn to listen during prayer, he can communicate back to you. And the Bible is God's way of sharing who he is and what he desires of us. And what he desires of us is, are you picking up on the theme? Very good. Relationship. He desires a relationship with us. He desires for us to fall in love with him. I was listening to a Christian radio station um, called Air One one time, and there was a female DJ talking about how this guy was going to try to break the world record for talking on the phone the longest. Guess what the current record was? 39 hours was the record for talking on the phone straight. And so this guy was going to set out to break that record. And this female DJ said, well, that's easy. All you got to do is fall in love and you'll break that record easily. And I thought, you know, she's got a point. Because I remember when I first started dating Andrea, and we would stay up till insane hours of the night on the phone. I remember one time we stayed up till five in the morning talking on the phone. You know, it's those early weeks of dating and you just want to know everything about the other person, right? We stayed up till five in the morning and your body is starting to do that thing where it's like falling asleep on you, but you keep forcing yourself to stay awake and keep talking. And it's like, why? Why not just go to sleep and give your body the thing it wants, right? But, but you just want to get to know them so much. You just want to ask more questions. What's your favorite this? What do you like about this? Where, where have you been? Where have you lived? Right? All these questions. And so every chance you get, you're on the phone. You know, after school, between school and going to cut the grass, you're on the phone with your girlfriend. And in between cutting grass and going to your friend's house, you're on the phone. And while you're at your friend's house, you're on the phone with your girlfriend. And your, your buddy is like, dude, did you come here to hang out with me or what? All you're doing is talking on the phone with your girlfriend, and you just can't get enough, right? You're so hungry to learn more about this person. Guys, what if we fell in love with God 
so much like that, that we just wanted to know him so much. We were just so hungry to learn more that praying for hours was like nothing. It was just, I just want to know more. Reading his Bible, reading his, that's really his love letter to us. You know, we're reading who God is. You're just so hungry to find out who God is. You're like, I want to read more, read, read more and more. Right? Um, King David in the Old Testament said, I love to meditate on your words day and night. Day and night. He's like, I can't get enough of it. I think King David loved the Lord. He's like, I just want, I want more. I want to learn more about this God. You know, another thing I remember when I first started dating Andrea is I was telling everybody about it. I was telling everybody I knew about my new girlfriend, right? I'm calling up my parents, tell them about my new girlfriend. I'm calling up my brother, my sister, my friends. I'm telling strangers on the street about my new girlfriend, right? Guys, like, what if, what if we were so in love with God that and, and our relationship, we just loved our relationship so much with God, we couldn't help but tell others about it. Like, you know, guys, I got to tell you about this, this God who loves me so much. He wrote a whole book, a whole love letter to tell me who he is and what he's like. I, I got to tell you about this Jesus who loved me so much that he died on the cross for me and took my place. What a different way of looking at evangelism and sharing our faith, right? Not because we have to, and like, if I don't tell so many people about Jesus, God's going to be mad at me. But I'm just so in love with God and my relationship that I've just got to tell others about him. It's a different mindset, isn't it? It's a different approach. People, we've got to get it out of our minds that, that being a Christian is just about going to church. Going to church is important, very important. And it's one of the ways that we spend time with God and with each other. But it's not just about going to church. You know, it's not just about, well, I got to, you know, I got to read my Bible and I got to give my tithe and I got to go to church and I got to, you know, and all these got to's as if Christianity is this checklist to get God off of our back and say, okay, God, I did all the checklist. Now, now leave me alone. Be happy with that. Right. God isn't looking for people who want a bare minimum checklist that they can check off to get God off their backs. God is looking for people who are seeking a relationship with him, that want to know him more. He's looking for people who hunger and thirst to know more about him and what he's like. And so let's get out of the checklist mentality and into an everyday relationship mentality. Amen. So maybe you've been a Christian for a long time, but you haven't been in love with Jesus for a while. It's time to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Get to Start getting to know him all over again. Start reading that word and, and finding out more about the God who's crazy about you, the God who loves you, that he would do anything to try to reach you. I can't wait till we sing Reckless Love again because I, I never get tired of that message. Where he's like, he's the God who, who would fight through anything to try to get to you. There's no wall he wouldn't climb, no mountain he wouldn't climb over to try to come after us and, and, and find us where we are and, and offer that relationship to us. Fall in love with Jesus all over again. And if you're sitting out there and you've never entered into a relationship with Jesus, he offers that to you today. He's already done his part of sending his son, Jesus, to the earth, showing that he loves us, reaching out to us through his word. He has reached out to us. And now he says, will you take my hand and reach out to me? And let's start walking together in relationship together every day. He wants to be with us. He wants to spend time with us. Um, and so put your faith in Jesus, that he's the son of God who died on the cross for our sins. Turn away from living just for yourself. It's called repent. Turn, turn from just living for yourself and make a change and start living for God. Change your heart, change your mind, and say, I want to do whatever God pleases from now on. Be buried in the waters of baptism. Let somebody else take you in their arms. I just still think it's such a beautiful picture uh, of identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Think about it. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. He was laid in a tomb. And then he rose from the dead. 
And when we're baptized, we're dying to our old self. We're saying that that old person's dead. And, and we're letting ourselves be buried under the water and to raise a newness of life. It's a beautiful picture. God was genius when he came up with that. <laughs> Sometimes I think we don't know how genius God actually is. Um, it's a beautiful picture. And then is it a checklist? Okay, we're done. We, we did all the steps. We're baptized. Last step, we're done. No, we continue to develop that relationship even further, even deeper. God has so much for us, guys. He has so much for us. If we will seek him more than we can even imagine, he can take us deeper into the relationship and living for him 